you're about to see in the first Democratic debate 2019, all they are going to talk about, all they care about is climate change nonsense, rights to abortion, taking away your guns, and more sodomite rights for the homos. Well, let's see, what does God think about climate change? Nehemiah says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. Worshipeth thee. God controls the weather. He creates the weather. He controls all things. No matter what carbon print we leave, no matter what nonsense they think the coal industry or energy industry is going to do to the earth, the Lord is still in control, but they don't believe in God. It's pretty simple. What does the Bible say about abortion rights? Well, Matthew 18 is pretty clear what the Lord thinks about children. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Children are important to the Lord. Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Children are pretty important to the Lord. We're to humble ourselves as a little child. Unless we be converted and become as little children, we shall not enter in the kingdom of heaven. You better believe God thinks children are very important and loves them very dearly. And you want to say it's okay and want to pass laws to kill all of them you can. These people are demons. And what does the Lord think about homos? What does the Lord think about the LGBTQ, LMNOPQRX community? If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them are committed an abomination. That's what he thinks. The Lord calls it an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Latinx whose families are torn apart, whose lives are destroyed, and whose communities are ruined. It's doing great for giant oil companies that want to drill everywhere. Just not for the rest of us who are watching climate change bear down upon us. Trouble affording their premiums. So I do get concerned about paying for college for rich kids. I do. But I think my plan uh, is a good one. And my plan would be to first of all make community college free. Um, and make sure that everyone else besides uh, that top percentile gets help with their education. Uh, my own dad and my and I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like uh, to rent a home and to worry about whether you're going to be able to pay the rent at the first of the month and to see a mom work very, very hard and know that moms across this country are getting paid less simply because they're women. I would do several things, starting with something we should have done a long time ago, which is to pass the Equal Rights Amendment finally in this country and also pursue legislation so that women are paid equal pay for equal work in this country. It's past time that we did that. And, you know, we have to do this. If we want to be the most prosperous nation in the 21st century, we need to make sure that women are paid what they deserve. All right, thank you. I want to accept need. Medicare for all solves that problem. And I understand. There are a lot of politicians who say, oh, it's just not possible, we just can't do it, it's have a lot of political reasons for this. What they're really telling you is they just won't fight for it. Well, health care is a basic human right, and I will fight for basic human rights. Astro, this one is for you. All of you on stage support a woman's right to an abortion. You all support some version of a government health care option. Would your plan cover abortion, Mr. Secretary? Yes, it would. Uh, I don't believe only in reproductive uh, freedom. I believe in reproductive justice. And 
you know, what that means is that just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor, doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. And so I absolutely would cover the right to have an abortion. More than that, uh, everybody in this crowd and watching at home knows that in our country today, a person's right to choose is under assault in places like Missouri, in Alabama, in Georgia. I would appoint judges to the federal bench that understand the precedent of Roe v. Wade and will respect it. And in addition to that, make sure that we fight hard as we transition our health care system to one where everybody can get and exercise that right. Senator Warren, Question. would you put limits on, uh, any limits on abortion? I would make certain that every woman has access to the full range of reproductive health care services, and that includes birth control, it includes abortion, it includes everything for a woman. And I want to I got one from a little boy and I got one from a little girl. And that is to say, when you're president, how are you going to keep us safe? That's our responsibility as adults. Seven children will die today from gun violence, children and teenagers. And they won't just die in mass shootings. They'll die on sidewalks, they'll die in playgrounds, they'll die in people's backyards. Gun violence is a national health emergency in this country. Federal government buyback program uh, in your plan, how is that going to work? Well, first of all, I want to say my colleague and I both have been hearing this on the campaign trail. But what's even worse is I hear gunshots in my neighborhood. I think I'm the only one, I hope I'm the only one on this panel here that had seven people shot in their neighborhood just last week. Someone I knew, Shahad Smith, was killed with an assault rifle at the top of my block last year. For millions of Americans, this is not a policy issue. This is an urgency. And for those who have not been directly affected, they're tired of living in a country where their kids go to school to learn about reading, writing, and arithmetic, and how to deal with an active shooter in their school. This is something that I'm tired of, and I'm tired of hearing people, all they have to offer is thoughts and prayers. In my faith, people say faith without works is dead. So we will find- Shootings seem like an almost every day or every week occurrence now. They don't make a complete news cycle anymore, no matter the death toll. As parents are so afraid as their kids go off to school that their kids will be caught up in something like this. Next to nothing has changed in federal law that might affect the prevalence of school shootings. Is this a problem that is going to continue to get worse over our lifetimes, or is there something that you would do as president that you really think would turn it around? Yeah, Rachel, I, uh, I'm the dad of a 10-year-old girl, Karina, who's here tonight. And the worst thing is knowing that your child might be worried about what could happen at school, a place that's supposed to be safe. The answer to your question is no. We don't have to accept that. And I believe that on January 20th, 2021, at 12.01 p.m., we're going to have a Democratic president, a Democratic House, and a Democratic Senate. And the activists of Parkland, folks from Moms Demand, who have risen up, risen up across the United States and inspired so many people, you know, we may not have seen yet legislative action, but look, we're getting closer. The House took a vote. In the Senate, the question often is if, it's, if the decision is between 60 votes, a filibuster, or passing common sense gun reform, I'm going to choose common sense gun reform. So I believe that we're going to be able to get that done in 2021. Rachel, Secretary Castro, Rachel, thank you. Rachel, I have something, I have something to add to this uh, briefly. Well, you, 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 what, 30 seconds for follow up on that question, on that answer from Secretary Castro, Congressman Ryan. You're talking about in the schools. These kids are traumatized. I support all the gun reforms here. We need to start dealing with the trauma that our kids have. We need trauma-based care in, in every school. We need social and emotional learning. And we and our administration are going to fund resiliency in those communities, in Miami, in Houston, Texas, those places that are on the front lines of climate change today. We're going to mobilize $5 trillion in this economy over the next 10 years. We're going to free ourselves from a dependence on fossil fuels. And we're going to put farmers and ranchers in the driver's seat, renewable and, and sustainable agriculture, to make sure that we capture more carbon out of the air and keep more of it in the soil. 
paying farmers for the environmental services that they want to provide. If all of us does all that we can, then we're going to be able to keep this planet from warming another two degrees Celsius and ensure that we move here. One of the first things you did after launching your campaign was to issue an apology to the LGBTQ community about your past stances and statements on gay rights. After the Trump administration's rollbacks of civil rights protections for many in that community, why should voters in that community or voters that care about this issue in general trust you now? Let me say that there is no one in our government at any level who has the right to tell any American who they should be allowed to love or who they should be allowed to marry. Civil rights is some place to begin, but in the African American civil rights community, another place to focus on was to stop the lynching of African Americans. We do not talk enough about trans Americans, especially African American trans Americans, and the incredibly high rates of murder right now. We don't talk enough about how many children, about 30% of LGBTQ kids, who do not go to school because of fear. It's not enough just to be on the Equality Act. I'm an original co-sponsor. We need to have a president that will fight to okay. protect LGBTQ Americans Thank every you. single day from violence. Thank you, Senator, Senator Booker. Booker.